But you have to say to yourself, you know, where do I want to stand as a professional trader going forward? Do I want to keep on continuing to chase the drug, the next high, okay? Or do I want to come back down to earth and look at everything at face value? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, Happy New Year everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, the first edition of uh, the Access uh 2021 update. Hope everybody uh, had a great uh, weekend. Hope everybody is having a great weekend. Hope everybody had a great uh, New Year's Eve. Um, this is the first time in, in my adult life or even adolescent life that I can remember staying home on New Year's Eve uh, because, you know, again, when you're young and you're, you know, even if you're not young, the point is you want to be around with people, you want to have a good time, blow off some steam, uh, kind of make some memories. But because of the pandemic, you know, again, obviously this is kind of the right thing to do. And again, I'm not judging if you went out, God bless, you know, you have a good time, you only live once. But again, for me and my family, that was kind of the prudent thing to do. And, you know, it's, it's so, you know, it's so amazing that when you, when you go back and you look at the numbers, from uh, 2020, which is which is staggering, absolutely staggering. Um, you had the S and P up 15, 16 percent, which is phenomenal. But when you look at the Nasdaq Composite, it's basically the the ultimate hold my beer theory. Forty, almost 43 and a half percent gain uh, for 2020, which is unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. And the the one thing that that I will say. During the internet craze, and again, I've said this numerous times, we got very, very lucky. I think the market made us right. The more and more I think about it, I, I, I think it's, I, I've taken away a little bit, um, given myself a little bit less credit than, than I should. I, I, I want to congratulate you guys, okay? If you started in 2020, I don't care if it was by luck, by skill set, the market made you right. The scoreboard is the scoreboard, right? If you started out and you survive 2020, again, at the end of the day, that's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to get it to the next year. I don't care how you got it, right? If you got there by luck, the market made you right again, congratulations, man. Seriously, congratulations. You made it uh, from your first year of 2020. You made your first year of trading. If you're only trading a couple of years, again, you made it another year. And don't let anybody take that away from you. Don't let the market tell you that, well, the market made you right. And, and again, that was my, and, and I have to admit, that was my, my mindset for most part of the year. You know, people are getting bailed out by chasing the market, whatever the case may be. And that is all wrong. That's a, and that's a subject of a, a completely different conversation. Um, your job right now, though, as the, you know, as the calendar turns, your job is not to give it back. Okay. And that is the hardest thing to do. Uh, because again, whether you made money accidentally or you made money, by your skill set, your process, whatever the case may be, your job right now is to keep it, okay? And that's the hardest part of this business, especially when you're new, when you're involved with a, an incredibly hyper-parabolic market that has no rhyme or reason to be where it is, but it is, right? And the scoreboard is the scoreboard. And the most important part going into uh, 2021, especially your first year, and especially for uh, you newer traders, um, the first week is really the most important week. And, and not because of your, uh, of your profit and loss. Uh, it, it's all about your psychology. And what happens is, I know a lot of single traders, I mean single, literally single traders, um, maybe they were at a friend's house. If you went to a bar, okay, I'm not judging. You know, you're sitting there with your buddy, your, another trading buddy, and you're screaming to yourself, wow, this trading thing is great. We're going to kill it this year, right? We're going to kill it this year. And maybe you will, and maybe you won't. But what you're doing is you're building up expectations, okay? You're building up anticipation. You're building up all this imagery in your head that you're almost subconsciously expecting the market to do exactly what it did, if not better, in 2021 and 2020. But quickly, unfortunately, people do see this. The dynamics of the markets change right on a snap of a finger. And again, we have saw that, especially in the last week or so of the market, we saw all the leaders. And if you've been watching this broadcast, you kind of see it. the value in this tape, for the exception of X amount of stocks, has been to the downside. All, you know, a lot of the names 
uh, really got hit this week uh, really hard as well. And they're setting up to actually a lot of value uh, to the downside in this week. But what happens is as you're getting deeper and deeper in this business and the years go by, your ultimate go goal is to detach yourself from any emotional value, right? Your ultimate goal is have that FOMO, right? The fear of missing out being removed and that being replaced with JOMO, which is basically the joy of missing out. So for example, Friday, I sat there, uh, excuse me, on Thursday, I sat there, that was my last day, last day of uh, the year, and there was some pretty good value, right? Some really good value, some pretty good pivots. I just sat there and I said, I'm okay with that. My year is done. Um, I did what I had to do. I'm, I'm happy uh, that I made it another year. My, my family's healthy. You know, I'm, I'm very content. And that's kind of where you want to be. You want to make sure that you're not trading because the market's open, uh, because you are getting value. And if you don't want to trade, you don't have to trade as well. And when you're, when you're getting at that point of you're a brand new trader, you go into the first week, and then all of a sudden that stock that you bought at 10 that went from 2 to 10 that day, all of a sudden closes at six. Another day goes by. You bought the stock at eight that went from four and it closes at three. Another day goes by. It's like a heroin addict, okay, getting off of an amazing high, right? Think about it. You know, th even if you've never experienced anybody, uh, unfortunately, with a drug habit, you know, what happens when they come, you know, they come off that high, they want another one. And the problem is when you run into a euphoric market, and that's exactly what happened uh, during uh, the dot-com era, and that's exactly what happened in 2020, despite all the pandemic, people are at highs, right? They need that next fix. And maybe, again, maybe that euphoria stretches out, right? You have Bitcoin, I think this morning was like a 30, 31,000, whatever it was, 30, 30. So maybe that extends with the euphoria, because again, people are always chasing the next high. The drug addicts are always chasing the next fix. So if you are a brand new trader, maybe, you know, maybe Facebook doesn't work anymore this week or Apple doesn't work anymore. But look, but, but look, there's face, uh, there, look, look there's, there's Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin, maybe it goes another 10,000 points and there are 10,000 coins, whatever it's called. Um, so there's, there, you know, you're constantly chasing the next high. The problem is when the momentum ends and it usually does, it doesn't make a difference at what point. The problem is you're going to be chasing that next high and that next high doesn't exist. And at that point, you really have to say to yourself, well, everything that I got to this point, look, I got it no matter how I got it, again, via luck or via skill set. But now I have to figure out how not to give it back. And that's the most important part. And, you know, people, you know, people have been asking me for the last two weeks, you know, you know, give some predictions for 20. Why? Why give some predictions, right? The whole goal is to get rid of emotions, get rid of expectations when you're putting you know when you're putting um, you know price targets on thing it's like somebody turning around and go well I'm giving Tesla a thousand dollar price target this year okay maybe it goes maybe it, go it doesn't but what you're doing is instead of letting go of emotions right you're tacking on to it think about that you know you're, 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 you're anticipating and are you gonna be very very disappointed like for example if you're long at Tesla 700 bucks from Friday you know, where are you going to be mentally if, again, and I'm not saying it won't, it will or it won't. I'm just using, you know, random, like, where are you going to be when the stock is at 600, right? Or maybe where are you going to be at 800, right? Where's your mentality going to be? Is it, are you going to keep on feeding the beast and the emotional, um, and the emotional sentiment at 800? Or are you going to start crashing down like a heroin addict that needs the next fix at 630? So that's why, again, putting predictions uh, putting expectations on yourself is the absolute worst thing in the world. And you know, I, if you've been watching this broadcast for the last, you know, even for the last year, I mean, if you constantly just hear me talking about one day at a time, one trade at a time, of course, there's multi-week runners on a lot of names, whether they're smaller cap names, whether they're uh, larger cap names, or even the mega cap names. And again, you can make that argument they did disappoint despite the 43% in the NASDAQ the last two months or so, they really have underperformed or so. So you can make that argument as well. But you have to say to yourself, you know, where do I want to stand as a professional trader going forward? Do I want to keep on continuing to chase the drug, the next high, okay? Or do I want to come back down to earth and look at everything at face value? I don't need the heroin. I don't need the crack. I don't need the cocaine. I know way too many drug references in this, in this update. I get it, but you kind of get the point, right? Are you constantly chasing that next big thing that's going to make you feel good emotionally, okay? Or are you finally going to come back down to earth and say to yourself, look, I'm looking at the market face value. I want to take advantage of 
prior traders' experiences, whether they're trading 10 years longer than me, 5 years longer from me, 25 years longer from me, and kind of take a page out of their book to kind of take a scale back, reassess everything that's going on, everything that's going on, and look at the market from a, you know, from a logical, practical point of view instead of Tesla's going to 1,000 this year. Bitcoin's going to 50,000 this year. Amazon's going to 5,000 this year. And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But I, I tell you from, from, from a lot of experience, the faster you can detach um, your emotional levels to this market, the better trader you'll be. And that's why I keep on reiterating the point. I've never had a fun day. I've never had an easy day. I've, you know, I've, I have days that have a, you know, I'm in a good mood, that you know, everything is fine. But I've never experienced that euphoric day that people, especially unfortunately on social media, are talking about how fun and easy and all that stuff. I don't know what that is. Like I'm doing, I'm doing this now 21 years. I don't know what that is. And maybe that's a good thing, okay? Maybe this is why I have disgust in my voice, when I have vomit pouring out of my mouth when somebody asks me uh, to give my opinion about this business. And the most important part is kind of going into 2020, we have to put things into perspective from um, a technical point of view. Because if you don't, unfortunately, a lot of you guys who have had that big, big run, and again, I congratulate you, I applaud you. If this is what you want to do for, for uh, a living, whether it's um, part-time, full-time, whatever the case may be, good for you. Okay, nobody could take that away from you. Now your job is to not give it back. Okay, get better. As we say, there's no such thing as a great trader. There's just a trader who's less shittier than the previous year. And that's exactly our goal. We want to be less shittier than the previous year. And once you get to that point of detaching yourself from emotion and looking at things from face value, that's when you, you'll start seeing very, very consistent results because you'll be emotionally removed from what you're seeing on the scoreboard and concentrating on your very specific skill set, whether you're trading Bitcoin uh, or small caps or mid caps or pivots or you know beta, whatever the case may be. But put yourself in a position of strength that you're not going to rely on anybody else this year and the most important part is look at the market from a realistic point of view, not the market that you want uh, to have. So going into, again, if you look at the technicals, again, nothing, nothing is really telling you, you know, one way or another. But again, for all you guys who have been actively trading this market now for the last week, you saw, you, mean, you see these, uh, these really aggressive pulls down. I mean, like even Amazon, you know, Amazon that had so much promise this week and it, and had a, had, it was a great pivot. Right? There was a hundred, you know, there's a hundred points on the pivot, but the problem is it gave it up. And you start looking at all the names that you know, a lot of these uh, retail e-commerce names, you know, you start looking at Shopify. I mean, it got hit pretty aggressively. Zoom that benefited the most out of any stock during this pandemic. And again, we had some serious pivots all week from this uh, 66 level to this uh, 49 level. Now this thing's getting down to this. Uh, 323, you know, 308 level. There's a lot of names that look really, really crappy. Look at Best Buy. Again, a lot of retail names that had big runs. They're all giving it up. Now, again, does that change the fact that they had those big runs? No, but again, the real, the realistic part about it is now they're very, very close uh, to breaking on down. But again, as much as there's really good still really good uh, setups for this week. And again, you could turn around and say, look, maybe Netflix uh, finally runs back to this 553 level. It broke out very, very aggressively on Friday. Again, still a good-looking setup. Uh, Micron, right, had a really, really good breakout on Friday. Uh, it took out a range that started all the way back on December, so you had a month of distribution. This looks good as well. Again, you know, very, very overextended. Maybe it's not something specifically for me, but it, again, you can see there's very, very good value there. And again, names, uh, more traditional names like Coke, right? Coke breaking out. Uh, names like uh, Las Vegas Sands that are very, very close to breaking out. So you can see there's still a lot of good value in the markets, but when you turn around and you start looking at the high flyers and you say to yourself, well, there's definitely going to be a market for everybody. The two lows of the world. Um, Peloton, again, maybe a couple of bucks away, but you have to assume if Zoom came in, right? And docu is coming in, all these other ones, if, you know, Peloton starts breaking down this level and you can see how it got rejected off the five, maybe you could get a big, big move down as well. So I, I think we're in a very unique situation, uh, especially going into uh, the first year of the week, that there's actually going to be value for everybody. Okay, if you're a short seller, again, look at the names that had big runs. Okay, you could see where the value is to the downside. If you believe the market's going to hell in a handbasket, right? 
you have value first week. If you are trading on the long side this week, plenty of value as well. Look, look, look at a stock, for example. Again, maybe it's not a stock that I would trade, but look at a stock like uh, Comcast, right? CM. CSA, right? There's a lot of value. There's a lot of really good looking charts. So all you have to do this weekend is do your due diligence, put in the work, a lot of good value to the downside, a lot of good value to the upside. Um, do I expect another 43% rally in the NASDAQ 100? No, I don't. Okay. I, I think if we can get, you know, if we can get a 10, 15% move, uh, is considered good. I know that sounds crazy. Only 15% for the year, right? But the S&P 500 for 2020 was up 15%. You know, would you be satisfied and happy with a 6% rise for 2021, right? If the answer is no, then again, you're still looking at this market uh, through euphoric rose-colored glasses. And I think if you want to kind of duplicate your efficiency, okay, that's the way to kind of describe it, uh, duplicate your consistency and your approach for 2021, you have to scale back expectations. You have to look at the market for one day at a time. Tell, see what the market is telling you. See what the government is saying. Stimulus checks, no stimulus checks. They're, they're coming. I think, what was it? I think 2000, right? If you made money in 2021, that's great. Congratulate yourself. If you're still getting your feet wet uh, as a new trader and you're still there for the first two, three years, it's okay as well. Your time will come. It will click. The most important part is, again, you know, be, um, you know, be proactive in your approach. Try to eliminate the noise as far as opinions, um, you know, emotional baggage. The faster you can you can embrace technical analysis, uh, the smoother transition from aspiring trader to professional trader you will be. So, guys, I want to wish everybody a very happy, uh, safe, uh, healthy, uh, prosperous 2021. May God continue uh, to bless you and your families. And with God's willing, I will see you all on Monday. Okay, guys, take it easy and have a great, great weekend.